fretboard. Isn't it a mysterious thing? I think you could spend a lifetime learning to navigate it and still not find all the paths that lie hidden beneath those strings. This lesson might help exploring it a little bit more. We all know the boxes and it's often how we start learning to find our way on the neck. But this little arpeggio trick will open your eyes on how to navigate more quickly and fluently over the entire fretboard. What I played in the intro was just the same arpeggio but adjusted to fit the chord that was being played. The tabs, the chords and the backing track in a variety of BPM are available on my Patreon page if you're interested. I used the progression of Autumn Leaves or Still Got The Blues because it's a nice showcase of the most used 7th chords. The minor 7, the major 7, the dominant 7 and the minor 7 flat 5. Oh, and by the way, I reached 800,000 subscribers, which is just incredible. So thank you so much. And I remember I passed the 100K mark in January 2017, which is unbelievable already by itself, but getting close to a million. Whoa. Please make sure to subscribe if you aren't already and hit the notification bell. I need that million. <laughs> Greed is such a bad thing. Okay, so let's dive into the magic shape. So the special thing about these arpeggio shapes is that you only play two notes per string. Super easy. So these seventh chords only have four unique notes in them. One, two, three, four. So we can play the entire arpeggio on just two strings. And then we repeat the same shape three times on the consecutive strings. So first octave, second octave, third octave. So doing this lets you play the arpeggios in three different octaves. Six strings, two times, three, right? Okay, so let's start on a minor seventh chord, which is the easiest, I guess. So the first two notes dictate whether it's a minor or a major chord. If you jump up three frets, then it's a minor chord. So use that on minor seven chords. So if we would take the example of A minor, which is fret five on the E string, we jump up three frets to fret eight. So now our arpeggio is a minor arpeggio. We decided that right now, fret five and fret eight. Now we move one string down because we go to the fifth. And most chords have a five in them, a perfect fifth. So which is one string down, two frets up. So we play fret five on the low E string, fret eight on the low E string, followed by fret seven on the A string. So just one string down, two frets up and play it with your index finger because we need the stretch for later. Five, eight, string down, seven. And the next note dictates whether the seventh is a major seventh or a minor seventh. And in a minor seventh chord, it's a minor seven interval. So we need to jump three frets up again from the perfect fifth. So this may sound like theoretical blah, 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 but you can also use it in a very practical manner. So just fret seven and fret 10. So three fret jump from the fifth. So we play fret five and eight on the E string and fret seven and 10 on the A string. Okay, that's it, that's it. That's the entire arpeggio. So now we play the second octave, just exactly the same. We start on the A again, but now one octave higher, which is fret seven on the D string. And we just play the same shape. So seven and 10, one string down, two frets up to the fifth again nine and 12. So we get two octaves already. And now we do exactly the same again. So we start on the A, which is fret 10 on the B string. And then fret 12 and 15 on the high E string. And then we end on the A if you like, fret 17. So we got three octaves, one, two, three. And then the A note is the fourth octave even. A, 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 A. Super awesome. So you move very quickly from a really low note to a very high note. And what I played in the intro was like a, a more um, artistic pattern. So like. Like this, moving up and down to make it even longer. Okay, so that's a minor seventh chord. You can start it everywhere on the neck. 
Start on E, for example. So E minor seven, A minor seven, you can do it everywhere, great. So now off to a major seventh chord, which is basically the same shape, we just have to alter two notes to make it uh, fit the seventh chord, the major seventh chord. So let's try it on C, fret eight on the low E string. So instead of being a minor chord, the major seven is a major chord. So we need to jump up four frets at first. So from eight, four frets up to fret 12. Now we decided this chord is a major, a major arpeggio. And then we go again to the fifth. So eight, 12, and then on the A string to fret 10, the fifth, the perfect fifth. But now we need to jump up four frets again to reach the major seventh interval, which is the fourth note from the C major seventh chord, any major seventh chord. So we go from fret 10 to fret 14. And those are the four notes we need for the major seven arpeggio. So fret eight and ten, uh, 12 on the E string, and fret 10 and 14 on the A string. And that's your C major seven arpeggio. And now we repeat it, one string down to C again, and then one string down again to C, which is fret 13 on the B string. And then you can play the fourth octave also, fret, what is that, 20? Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is it. And of course you can play it back down again as well, starting on the C, and then you play. So wonderful lines, you can create beautiful melodies using these arpeggios. So we got the minor seven, the major seven, now we need the dominant seven, or just the seven. So let's try G7, G dominant seven. We start on the G, which is for three on the low E string. And the first jump is gonna be a major because the dominant seven is a major chord. From three, four frets up to fret seven. So you may think this is quite the stretch, but you know, keep your thumb down. Don't make the angle of your wrist too big because that can uh, hurt your wrist. So. so major jump from three to seven, then to the perfect fifth. So one string down, two frets up. Again, same rules. And then we start on five. And now we make a three fret jump. So from fret five to fret eight, landing on the minor seven interval, because the dominant seven has a major third and a minor seventh. So one, three, five, flat seven in functions. So it's fret three, fret seven, fret five, fret eight. And then you've got the dominant seven arpeggio. One swing down, one swing down. And that's your dominant seven arpeggio. Beautiful, super easy because they all use the same basic shape. So your picking stays the same, your fretting stays the same. You only have to move them up one fret or one fret down or one fret up. So um, we got the three most common ones and now we are gonna explain the fourth one which is minor seven flat five or half diminished. But first let's finish my coffee because it's getting cold. Ah, it is cold. So in A minor, the minor seven flat five chord is basically played on the two, the second degree, so on B. So let's explain it on B. So it's a minor chord. So we start on B, fret seven on the low E string, and we jump up three frets, seven to 10. So instead of jumping up to the perfect fifth, which we need on the previous three chords, we jump up to the diminished fifth, which is just one fret lower than the perfect fifth. So seven to 10, and then one string down, one fret up, so to fret eight. And from the diminished fifth to the minor seven, which is the interval we need, it's four frets up. So seven, 10, and then eight, 12. 
and now you repeat the same shape on the consecutive strings. So um, on the D string, fret 9 and 12, one string down, one fret up, fret 10, jump up four frets, 10 to 14, and then we continue on the B string. Um, so we start on the B again, fret 12, 12, 15, 13, four frets up to 15, and then you can end on the B. So. Beautiful. And that's basically everything there is to it. Those four chords are the ones I used. So now we started on the E string, the low E string, but you can also do the same starting on the A string. So I played a, a E dominant seven as the second to last chord in the intro. And I played it from the fret seven on the A string, seven, 11. And then to the perfect fifth, one string down, two frets up to nine, nine and 12. Perfect fifth, minor seven interval, so. And then one string down to the E again, major. And then because you jump the, to the B string halfway the arpeggio, you need to move everything one string up because the B string is tuned relative one semitone lower. So it's um, nine, 13, one string down to fret 12, 12, 15. So. Beautiful. The chords I played in the intro were A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, F major seven, B minor seven flat five, E seven, and A minor again. So those are all the arpeggios. Unravel that mysterious fretboard and take it easy. These shapes don't stay into your system if you repeat them only once. Repeat them every day for a few times for a week and I'm sure you've unlocked the fretboard a bit more, as they say. So just to keep you updated, by the way, I've been working on a guitar course the last few months and it's close to being finished. And if you want to be kept in the loop and hear about it when it's being released, make sure to visit learnpracticeplay.com and subscribe to the mailing list. Thank you. This was Paul. Have a wonderful day and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. Thank you. And thumbs up if you like this video. Bye. <laughs> Worst ending ever. <laughs>